So if you've ever watched any of those action movies where usually the president of America uh, is, is there's, someone, there's an actor playing the, the president of America and there's any sort of an attempt on his life or any kind of superstar or any kind of dignitary for that in, in the same vein, if ever there's kind of a, a, a threat or a danger or an explosion or a gunshot, whatever, you'll notice all of the, the bodyguards, they form a, a circle around him so that if anybody is going to try and shoot this person, they literally have to shoot one of the bodyguards. And the bodyguards know this, so they'll stand in front of the person that they're going to defend. They'll stand, they'll form a little circle around them and, uh, and protect them, willing to offer their lives, willing to die uh, in order to protect this person. And it's, it's uh, an act of kind of heroism in the movies. It's shown as, as, as something quite heroic to do, absolutely. When we think of real-life situations, we think of family situations, when a child is diagnosed with some sort of an illness, I've often heard parents say, I'd rather it was me. And I think probably most parents would say that. If, they were, if their child were to be diagnosed with leukaemia, I think most parents would say, if we had a choice here, I'd rather it was me. And again, something even more heroic about that, about you know, taking up upon yourself a, an illness or, or a disease in order to, to prevent someone else from having it. There's something very selfless about it. It's a different level of, of love. When we think of love, I think the word love in today's world normally is associated with uh, religious, uh, romantic love, kind of this uh, erotic love even. Uh, and forgetting that, that love is, is, is God's very nature. So love is, yes, it includes that kind of romantic love, but that kind of romantic love isn't, isn't even the highest expression of love at all. St. Paul says in the letter to the Colossians, it makes me happy to suffer for you as I am suffering now and in my own body to do what I can do to make up all that has still to be undergone by Christ for the sake of his body. It makes me happy, happy to suffer for you and to make up, in other, words, in, in, in other translations says, to make up for what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. So what on earth does that mean? Firstly, being happy about suffering, and secondly, making up of what lacks or what still has to be undergone in the sufferings of Christ. Surely Christ's cross was sufficient. Surely that was enough. Surely that actually no more could possibly have been done by the Lord on the cross. So what, what does it mean then to make up for what still has to be gone or make up for what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ? We, are, we continue the Lord's mission. The Lord deliberately sets things up so that we are his hands and his feet. We, like, he hands the priesthood, uh, his priesthood, on to others. Rather than sending angels, rather than staying here himself, which he could have. And imagine if, imagine if Mass was celebrated um, once a week by uh, Jesus. <laughs> imagine I mean, he could come back, why not? And there in the Vatican, once a week, Jesus comes out and celebrates Mass. Um, I mean, it, 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 there was a Last Supper, he has done it, but he doesn't do this. He, he sends, he commissions others to go out and continue his work and his mission of preaching, teaching, also celebrating the Mass, celebrating the sacraments. So he wants us to be like him. He wants us to, to learn, to, to react and act as he does. So what was the greatest form of love? What was the greatest act of love? Well, the greatest act of love wasn't, wasn't romantic, even though that is, it should, and it should be an act of self-giving, uh, that kind of romantic love, that, that one flesh union, as it's called, or the, the marital embrace. Yes, that should be an act of, of mutual self-giving, but there's a, a, even a higher form of self-giving, and that's this self-sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And this is where our love can, can grow so much more when we see the kind of love that, that so many uh, saints, even parents today, have for, for those entrusted to their care. I remember once meeting a family where the, their son had f fairly bad autism and would basically shout all day and have uh, it had autism and ADHD. So he'd always have to have the attention of, 
of the mother or anybody else who was there. And so he'd walk over to you and just shout in your face for whatever he wanted. And you know, constantly kind of moving, constantly bouncing. And um, I, I went to visit them and I, I, felt, I, felt, I felt almost kind of threatened by this, you know, because he, he was in his late teens, so he'd become a big guy. And, uh, but just kind of shouting, constantly shouting, constantly moving. I just kind of found myself as constantly kind of put my back to the wall just so I could see where he was, you know. Uh, but then he did the people on his headphones so he could have fairly loud music or watch TV because he liked everything up loud. He liked everything to be loud, loud, loud. And I just remember like, talking to the mom, like, and she just looked constantly exhausted. Exhausted. Because that must be so, so tiring. But what an incredible, what a heroic act of self-sacrifice that is. Like that, the kind of love they we're talking about here, you know, to make up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. How, how, do we, how do we do this? So there's nothing lacking in the sufferings of Christ, but he wants us to be like him. So he wants us to love like him. He wants us to share in his mission. He also wants us to share in his suffering, not as a punishment, but because it helps us to love. Nothing teaches us to love. Nothing teaches us to love like the cross. Nothing. So the cross then teaches us to become more like him. Those words are so easy to say, and I don't want to make little of anybody's uh, illness or cross or suffering because the cross is hard. But nothing teaches us to love like that. So then we learn to, to carry that cross and to love despite the cross, or maybe even love because of the cross. Then our hearts become more and more like the hearts of our Savior. I was thinking of a story from Mother Teresa when... when she went to visit a family and she gave them a, a, a portion of rice. So the family were, were, were very, very poor indeed. So she gave them a portion of rice uh, f- uh, to, this, uh, to this mother of the family for herself and the kids. And so Mother Teresa went on talking to, to the mom and, and, and the children. Then the mom just said, sorry, I'll be back in a second. She leaves the house and comes back after a, a, a time. And Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa just asked her, where, where did you go? And she said, oh, I just went to my neighbours. They're, they're Hindus and they have nothing to eat either. And I just gave them half the rice. So she'd been given like a, a ration, basically. But her love was so great that she's willing to, to probably suffer hunger for love of, of her neighbour, who wasn't a, wasn't a Christian, but it didn't matter. It, they, were, they were a person in need. And this is like the, the great love that we're capable of and the great love that we're called to. To love selflessly and to love even when it costs me. To love even when it causes me to suffer. That's divine love. That's how God loves. And that's what we can learn through our daily life through the carrying of our crosses through the daily experiences and rejections and loss and loneliness and failure and inability and all of those other difficulties that come our way it's that way for us nothing is wasted nothing goes unseen nothing is forgotten any sacrifice that we make out of love any hidden cross that we carry out of love everything that we do out of love is remembered by God our sin yes that is that is forgotten that is atoned for, wiped away, and not brought up again. But all that we do out of love, none of that is forgotten. None of that is forgotten. All of that then serves for the building up of the church. So we ask the Lord today. We pray for those who suffer particularly, for those who have physical or mental ailments that are very, very challenging. We ask the Lord to strengthen the sick, the mentally and physically ill, that they may unite their crosses to the, so- to the cross of Christ for the same goal, the redemption of mankind. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, this is Father Patrick Cahill here. Thank you so much for joining us for our homilies here on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening on. Uh, I work here in a place called Holy Family Mission where we form young people in the faith. We have a great need here in Ireland and indeed across the world of knowing our faith and being capable of going out there and sharing it, 
uh, competently with others. If we can't understand our faith, if we don't know our faith, we can't uh, bring anybody into it. No one is brought into the faith. Uh, no one is compelled to come into the faith. People see us live the faith. So in order to, to live it, we have to know what the Lord is expecting of us. So our goal here is to form young people in the faith, and we're starting into our eighth year now, which is a great privilege and uh, a great joy for us all. We're starting on 24th of September. We are in need of benefactors, though. Uh, we have a, a beautiful house which was given to us here by the Rossminian Order. Uh, it's fantastic, it's wonderful, but it is high maintenance, and these days all those things are very expensive. If you feel the Holy Spirit moving your heart to support our mission here in Holy Family, we're hoping to raise about €25,000 before uh, 20, the 24th of September, before the start of the year here. We're about, we have about 10000 raised so far, but we need your help to, to get to 25 if we can. We have some renovations to do on the house here, and we need to support uh, our young people as they come in here to start this year of faith formation. So if the Holy Spirit is asking you to pray to support us financially, please, please do so on our website, holyfamilymission.ie. Uh, if not, please pray for us. Please pray that uh, our mission here will always be protected and that we'll always do the will of God and that his glory may be made manifest in all that we do and all that is done through Holy Family and all that, that they do, uh, all that the Holy Family Mission team will do throughout the year and all that the alumni will do uh, in their various workplaces uh, and study uh, universities, colleges, wherever they'll be afterwards. We ask that the Lord will always guide them to be effective ministers of uh, Christ's word in the world. So please feel free uh, to support our mission and please pray for us. God bless. Bye now.